Good to have you here this morning, Brother Burl. I hope you have a wonderful day. It's good to see you this morning. If you have a copy of God's Word, Luke chapter 13, let me ask you to please pray for my wife. She asked me today to have us pray. So hopefully here in the next week or so, she'll be able to make at least Sunday morning. We're praying about it. And uh, it would be encouraging to her to be able to be around us. Amen. She wants to be here. Uh, but I'm uh, supposed to be getting some information from the doctor there Friday. and uh, But uh, she has had some difficult days. Yesterday was a better day, I'll just say that. And I'm grateful for it. All right, Luke chapter 13. And we'll start our reading in verse 34. Luke chapter 13. Uh, 13, verse 34, one verse. Let me say, don't forget tonight, we'll be back in the life of David. For you know what, Thanksgiving's going to be here, isn't it? Amen. And we'll be having that Thanksgiving meeting. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I believe, I'm thinking Brother Cagney's going to slip over in between his service. And uh, so uh, you mark it off. I'm sure we'll have a great service that day. Amen? Amen. All right. Luke chapter 13, verse 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets, and stonest them that are set unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily, verily, and verily I say unto you, Ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Father, thank you so much for your kindness. Lord, I ask now that you'd help us as we begin to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Lord, I pray you'd help us to uh, just... uh, Lord, look into the scriptures uh, and see uh, thy brokenness over your nation. And I pray that you'd help us to get a glimpse of what is not only going on today, but will happen in the near future. I pray for these that are away from us, Lord. I thank you again for these that will come today. Lord, thank you for their faithfulness. I pray you'd bless them today and encourage them. Uh, Lord, bless our church, bless our families, and Father, I promise you for all that you do, we'll love you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is the lament of the Lord. He is uh, much like Jeremiah is weeping. Christ is weeping over Israel, Jerusalem, Uh, and he's uh, putting out a few things that I think are relevant for the hour. First of all, I, I'm, I know everyone's aware of it. Others may be further up to date in news than some of us. Uh, but Jerusalem is at war. Israel is at war right now. And uh, many of their people have been killed. Some of them are, in, are hostage, taken as hostages. Uh, their cities, the, the, the Palestine is being blown up, which it should be, amen, until they do something that ought to do with something that's right. Um, But in the midst of that, we are seeing God's people suffer immensely. Uh, I don't know how many young girls were abused, how many women were abused, how many families were killed just the last few days, the last month. And uh, we uh, look at it here in America, and we... uh, we don't have bullets flying through the air in America. No one's hearing the sound of the bomb coming in to find shelter. How blessed America is. Well, I just got a question for you. If God loves Israel the way He does, and you know that He does, He is allowing, and some of these things are unfolding in Israel. Where is America when it comes to the future before too long? (laughs) 
I'm telling you, I know we're standing with Israel, and I'm very grateful for it. But the Lord here is speaking about some things that will take event in the near future. You don't have to turn there because I'm going to quote from here. But in Matthew chapter 24, you're going to find out uh, the Lord is speaking of His return. Now, we know there's a lot of events that have to take place before that. This is not the rapture of the church in Matthew 24. Uh, you see that there's some things before the Lord comes back and sets up His kingdom. He wanted to set His kingdom up here in Jerusalem, and they would not. And look at what He says. He says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together, as the hen gathereth her brood under her wings, and you would not. And he talks about them being desolate. Uh, the word simply means lost, lonely, or miserable. Now let me just ask you this. I realize we're standing with Jerusalem. We're standing with Israel. And there's a lot of countries that are standing with Israel today. I'm very much aware of that. But I'll tell you this much, if a nation ever felt lonely, it was a couple days ago when them men started flying in and, and shooting off machine guns and hand grenades and decapitating children. I'm talking about brutal wickedness taking place on innocent people. I promise you, friend, there was some loneliness there when the children were missed, when mama was missed. When dad was taken into custody and dad was taken uh, as, a, as a criminal of war or whatever you want to call it, hostage, uh, the Lord uh, was pleading with Israel at this day and time that I've just read to accept Him. Do you realize if the nation of Israel would have accepted Christ as king, I personally believe He would have set His kingdom up. Well, He's going to do it anyway. He's going to rule with a rod of iron it's coming, you know it and I know it. But there's a few things in Matthew 24 that's got to transpire first. Did you know this? The Bible talks about the fullness of the Gentiles to the end of the Gentile nation. There's just uh, got to have one more, two more, however, the last one to be saved. We're in a time right now which is called the age of grace. God's did this on the Gentile nation. That's you and I. That's us. God's given this time for us to get saved, for our loved ones to get saved. When that ends and the last one gets saved, I don't know when that'll be. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you I know when it's going to be. Neither do you. I can tell you this much. It's, getting, it's approaching very fast. Uh, I don't know how much time we have left in the age of grace. I don't claim to know that, but I do know there's limited time. Time is running out very fast. Uh, I thought about this just yesterday, uh, how uh, long my wife and I have been together. Uh, 38 years, 39 years, that's a long time, amen? And then just to, to take place that fast, you get to thinking about it, you got saved, and some of us have been saved 20, 30 years, and it just seems like that was yesterday, and it's been 30 years. Time is passing very rapidly. Jesus is looking at Israel here and he says, there's coming a time it's going to be desolate for you. It's going to be a very lonely time. It's going to be a very miserable time for you. You're going to seem lost. Now look, you have to understand the Jews today, the Orthodox Jew, they do not believe what you and I believe about Christ. They're still looking for the Messiah to come. Well, He's already come, amen? He's already come, and He's already died, and He's already uh, been buried, and He's already risen from the grave, hallelujah. Uh, that's already all taken place, amen? amen? If they would have accepted Christ, I personally believe the Lord would have set up His kingdom. Well, they didn't. And the Lord had sent, God had sent prophets, God had sent men to uh, prepare the nation of Israel. John the Baptist was one of them. What'd they do to John, friend? 
They cut his head off, put him in prison and cut his head off. Many were stoned. Jesus said, thou that stonest the prophets. In other words, uh, Israel would not listen to God. And Jesus is coming. And what Jesus is weeping about, I personally believe, is some of the things that Israel will go through because of the willful denial of accepting him at the time while he was here on this earth. He said, if you would have accepted me, he said, I would have gathered you and your children as a hen gathereth her brood. Now, I, I saw this. I'm sure many of you have seen this before, but I'll use it as an illustration. Uh, you ever seen a mother hen, buddy? She is on top of her babies. She don't let them get along too far. And I tell you this much, anything that comes within the path of them, them chicks, she will peck it to death, buddy. She is out to keep those chickens, those little chicks, from harm. Uh, that's how a mother ought to be, and most mothers are. But this mother hen, buddy, uh, Jesus doesn't use her for, no, uh, for just any old reason. He is emphasizing how she gathers them under her wings. And we know Psalm 91 speaks of under his wings, how he'll protect the nation of, of Israel and how he'll protect his people. And what God means there is this. Jesus was willing to bring the nation of Israel under his wings and protect them and keep them from any future harm and any future heartache that would come to pass. And the scripture said, and ye would not. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't listen to the truth. And so the Lord is brought to tears over the outward rebellion of the nation of Israel. Now look, I don't want anything bad to transpire to any people. I don't want to see no one uh, go through heartache and sorrow. But I'm telling you right now, God's people, some of them are going through things that this Bible has prophesied about uh, for years, how that, the, that they will go through pain because of the rejection of the Messiah. Look, He's already come. We know that. They don't know that. They're still looking for the Messiah that we've received and been saved, and, and, and He's died for you and I. There are confused people. Look, God is not the author of confusion. Amen? God is not the author of it. The Jewish people are going through some things today in this day and time, which is very unfortunate. Uh, some of them, some of the things that they will go through, and I'm not saying Hamas is it, okay? I'm saying uh, personally, I'm referring to the future, not what's going on now, the present day. There'll be many things that will take place that the Jewish people will experience that's heart-rending. Uh, the Lord talks about the temple, not one stone coming down. I'm telling you, there's going to, you think there's some bombing going on now, friend. There's going to be destruction one day. And I'm telling you, it's going to be devastating to this world and to the people. Well, before that time comes, what are the Jewish people doing? How are they living now? Well, uh, Jesus said they were living as though they were lost and miserable. Lost and miserable. I read about the story about the mother chicken and a place caught on fire. I don't know if you've seen this. You may have. I'm sure you have. But the place that caught on fire, uh, there was a little mother chicken and it burned to death there when the firemen were putting it out. And they looked and they said, look at this chicken. What's wrong with this stupid chicken? It, it sit here and got cooked during this fire. Why didn't it move? And they go on and tell the story. One of the firemen reached down and he moved the mother chicken and out come the little chicks that was under her wings. She would not allow those chicks to get out in that fire uh, because of the danger, but she would literally die and give herself 
for those chicks while she protected them under her wings. That is the mentality that Christ is saying here. I would have sheltered you. I would have protected you. I would have taken you under my wings, but ye would not. Now look, here's the thought. Uh, Friend, if Jesus meant that to his own people, which the scripture said he came unto his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. If he said that to his own people, what does it mean? What is the message for the Gentiles? I tell you what, this is the age of grace. And if you're a Gentile, you're going to get saved in this age now, in the age of grace. Are you saying a Gentile can't get saved after the tribulation? No, I'm not saying that. You saying a Gentile can't get saved during the tribulation? No, I'm not saying that. I don't know what you believe. But I'll tell you this much. When the Holy Spirit of God is taken out of this earth, it's going to be very hard for anybody to get saved. And I personally believe there will be a few. The Bible talks about a few souls being saved during that time. And I personally believe them, those people that get saved will literally have to give their lives in faith in Jesus Christ to be saved. There'll be a few. Hey, you got people nowadays that won't give their, they won't, they won't stand up in faith and there's no persecution. How many do you think are really going to be saved when the really persecution sets in? Well, what does he mean? They're not going to be seen until, see him again until blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I'll tell you what's going to be seen. The Bible talks about wars and rumors of wars, pestilent times, uh, earthquakes in diverse places. And the Lord goes on in Matthew chapter 24 there and he says, uh, but the end is not yet. He said it ain't the end. They're asking him in that passage when the end of the world is going to come. And when, they're refer, when he's referring here in Matthew, uh, Luke chapter 13, in the latter, latter verse I just read, and he's talking about to, they're not going to see him again. This blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He's saying, you're not going to see me again till I come back and I rule with a rod of iron. Now look, they're going to be the nation of Israel, friend, who rejected the Lord, who could have had the Lord to be their king all this time. One day there is going to be major sorrow because of the decision they made to crucify the Messiah. See, they don't even know it. And They were asked, what shall we do with this man Jesus or Barabbas? And they chose Barabbas, a murderer, over the Lord of glory. They chose him. That's what they wanted. What were they chanting in those days when God's Son had come? If they knew their Bible, if they'd listened to the prophets, if they wouldn't have stoned the prophets, if they'd listened to God's way, they would have known the Messiah was before them. But they didn't do that. You know what they did? He said, Thou which stoneth the prophets, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have gathered you as a chick. Do you know what he's saying there? Christ in this passage is going, is bow, I personally believe, bowed over weeping over this city because of the, sin, of the pain that's coming in their life over a choice of not to receive him as the Messiah. In other words, when they made this choice to not accept Christ, They chose overwhelming pain and sorrow to come in their life, is what he's saying. If they would have chosen him, friend, there wouldn't have been no heartache. There wouldn't have been no sorrow. It would have all been, he would have set the kingdom up and glory to God, we wouldn't even be sitting here. But you know what? They didn't do it. What they do, they chose their own way. They knew things they thought better than their own. And did you know what? Jesus is weeping and broken over the choice of the people of the nation of Israel choosing their way over his. Now look, why, why, was he, why was he broken? He was broken because of the sorrow that they invited into their life. Let me tell you something. Anytime you choose something over Christ, you're choosing sorrow. 
Anytime you and I are choosing something over Christ, we are choosing sorrow. Now look, I'm telling you right now, if you think what took place here a few weeks ago is bad, friend, there's coming a time in the tribulation period that it is going to be sorrowful. I mean, I, now look, some of you may, well, it ain't going to be that bad for me. I'm a Christian and I'm not going to be there. I'm not going through the tribulation. I don't know what you believe. Some people, some Christians believe they're going through the tribulation. The Bible teaches you and I that we are saved from future wrath. We're not going through no tribulation. I'm not going to be here. But here's what I'm saying. You're beginning to see the beginning, Matthew chapter 24. If, he said, if you see the signs and wonders, wars and rumors of wars, these are the beginning of sorrows. What you're seeing now are the beginning of sorrow. The Bible is unfolding in front of our eyes. Israel is at war right now. The United States of America is literally debating whether to send money to Palestine or not. Wake up! I'm telling you, the Lord is coming! Now what's next? What has to happen before He comes? He said these are the beginning of sorrows. Well, I know we don't think about it much. But the rapture of the church has to take place. And it's going to. We don't think about the rapture of the church much. We don't. We come to church. We go about our, our meeting. And I'm, a, I'm the same as you are. I'm not being condemning. We all, none of us really think about the rapture of the church What's going to take place? Did you realize this? You are going to, if you're a Christian and the Lord tarries, we're going to either go through death or the rapture. But here's the thing. He may not tell you. It may be closer than you think. Him dealing with all this thing. That means the rapture of the church has to take place. We could go out in a minute. I wished I would. I, I would love to go in the rapture. I really would. You know how many people, you know how much really, really believe in the rapture, the is going to break through. If we really believed in the rapture, friend, <laughs> come on. Rapture, somebody said the rapture ain't even taught in the church. Oh, yes, it is. We're going to be snatched away. The church, the church is going to be snatched away one day. When is it going to happen? It's going to take place before what he's talking about here in Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, he's talking about the great tribulation. Now look, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being taken out of the way. Now here's, what you, here's what's going to happen. You see this world right now. Do, 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 do you realize that we... Washington, D.C. is not holding this thing together. I mean, if you think that we got anybody in Washington with a brain that's keeping this thing from going uh, nation against nation and king and kingdom against kingdom, you are naive. I'm telling you, we are ripe for World War Three, Closer than I've ever seen it in my life. When you go and you brutally take out, do you really believe that that, that that was a surprise to some nations that this was going to happen? Friend, this was set up. It's the, do you really believe how in the world with the best defense system in the world, America, and then Israel, and it just gets by? Are you kidding me? This thing is, could get out of hand very quickly. And it's going to be a miracle and a grace of God in the grace age if it doesn't get a... The rapture of the church could take place right now as I speak. And it's closer to the rapture than I've ever seen it in my life. Israel's under war. America has no leadership. Russia's in great power. China is in great power. And I'm telling you, he could come any moment. Like a thief in the night. And I'm like John. Even so, come Lord Jesus. You look at this world. 
you look what's going on. If you're here this morning and maybe you're not having that great of a day or maybe things are difficult right now, but you're a Christian, if you're a blood-bought child of God, do you realize what is going to transpire in my life and in yours in the near future? We're going to be out of here. We're going to be gone. But you know what? (laughs) We're on this side of eternity. We don't look at things that way. You, you, you realize it don't end right here. Well, you know, if they place your body out here at this graveyard, it ain't over then. It's over in this, this, this life. But the Bible speaks much about the second life. And did you know what? It's going to take place. And I'm telling you, this thing is getting closer than I've ever seen it in my life. The rapture of the church could take place this morning. But you know what? He talks about this. He says there will be wars and rumors of wars. Signs and earthquakes in diverse places. Pestilence. I mean, think about it, folks. Look what's happened just in the last year or so. I don't believe there's nobody in this building or under my voice that would lie to the extent to say that they could see COVID-19 and everything going to happen with it coming. Do you realize they just about shut down everything? They had us so scared to touch a, a doorknob to do it. I'm telling you, You would have never guessed it. You would have never dreamed it would have ever happened. If you hadn't been through it and somebody had been telling you and I about it, you'd have said, no way. Well, they had been telling us for how long? You you do realize a lot of these movies and things that are put out are are to prep you and I. You, you, You realize that, don't you? Oh, yeah. You're going to tell me you've never seen a movie or heard of a movie about an infection getting out and infecting the globe. I'm telling you, we are living in days like we've never been in before and the Lord said it was going to be this way. And look, it, this isn't a time to get sad or to get broken. I hate it for Israel. I'm broken hearted for Israel. But Jesus is coming, friend. Did you know what he said? He said wars and rumors of war. He said this is not the, he said this is the beginning of sorrow. This is not the end. They said, Lord, in Matthew 24, when shall the end of the world be? He said these are the beginning of sorrow. What's the beginning of sorrows? What's unfolding in this day right now, friend? What you're seeing is, hey, look. You're seeing the church is nowhere near what it used to be. It's not, what I mean by that is this, as far as number wise. And the Lord is coming after his church. He's coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. We don't think about it. We don't don't meditate on them. I'm telling you, he is coming after his church. Now look, what do I got to do between now and then? I've got to keep my eyes on the Lord. He said, uh, you would not. Can you imagine the people that are living in this day? They're going to see the Lord again. And you know what he says. He said they're going to look on him whom they pierced. This, these people are actually going to look into the eyes of Christ whom they rejected. And they're going to see him for who he really was. And they, when they do... There's going to be a moment of sorrow like they have never experienced in their life. They were going to realize that they have crucified their Messiah. They shall see him whom they've pierced, the Word of God says. And reality is going to shockingly wake them up, and then you know where they're going. Now, I've said all that to say this. Christ is broken over the decisions that they are making not to accept him. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have gathered thee as a hen gathereth her brood. Watch it. But 
ye would not. Now listen, that same message is given to a lost person today. I mean, there's people that are lost without God. They're not saved. I'm sure that there's probably people under my voice. I'm not saying there's anyone in this building, but there may be someone out here watching this that's never truly been saved. And they, they literally think that God is going to change his mind one day. God's just going to change his mind towards sin. No, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the sinner. He died for the Jewish people. He died for the Gentile people. And we're going to have to answer for it one day. But you know what? I'll tell you this much. I come When a man comes to the reality of their sin, they realize they're lost without God. Now he looked at, he looked at the nation of Israel here. He said, he used the word desolate, lost, depressed, miserable. Why? Because the very God that created them, they had rejected and turned away. And that's how it is with a lost man, woman, boy, or girl. If they've never been saved and, and Christ never reached out to the Christ, never accepted Christ for who he is, especially in the day and time that we're living, how many young... Now look, you, you, may, you may not agree with this and that's okay. I realize I believe in what's called the, cage, uh, the age of accountability. You don't have to believe that. What do you mean by that, preacher? Well, there's some children who will die. Young people, let me use the word instead of children, let me use the word young people. You realize there are young people who, who can die and go to hell. You're aware of that. Oh, if they're under 12, they're not going. You don't know that. When they come to the age of accountability, what is the age of accountability? The Southern Baptist Church wants to use the, use, the, use the age 12. Well, I disagree with that. I've met some five-year-olds that are pretty smart. And when they come to the age of accountability, they know what's right and what's wrong. They know there's a God. They know there's a hell. They know there's a heaven. They know there's sin. And they are mentally capable of making a right or wrong decision about this subject. That's when it is, and only God knows that. I don't know that. But we have got people falling off the face of this earth. And some of them were slaughtered last, last month. You believe just because a person is a Jewish person, and if, they, if, they've, been, if, if they've heard the gospel and they've been exposed to sin, if they die without Christ, you think God's going to change his mind? It breaks the heart of Christ here because of the decision these people made. He was among them and they willfully rejected Christ. And when, when they rejected the Lord, it brought sorrow to his heart. And I'm saying all that to say this. Friend, we got people rejecting Christ every day. And the message is this. It breaks the Lord's heart. Why does it break his heart? He knows the future. You know, he actually talked about fearing him who had the power of life and death. And there's not a lot of people today that really, really fear the Lord. And what I mean by that is acknowledge that he is real, that he is there, and that one day what he's saying here is going to happen. He is coming back. Now look, here's what's going to happen. The rapture of the church is going to take place. And I'm, I'm there. I'm going there. Okay. I'm in the rapture. If it takes place today, I'm gone. Amen. Then you're going to have seven years of tribulation. Now, you's talking about, you think it's bad now, you're going to have all hell break loose during those seven years. I mean, what are you going to do then? Well, I'm just going to say no to the mark of the beast. Well, okay. We'll see. <laughs> they have done set us up. For the mark of the, you know how easy it's going to be to have the mark of the beast on you? We, we, we ain't even thinking about it. We, we, we used to get all bothered. Oh, yeah, they're going to put chips in, in animals one day. That's been going on for years. They encourage some people nowadays to put chips in their children. 
They've been prepping us for years. Barcodes. You know how easy it is to keep up with something through a barcode? I'm telling you, if you're here after the rapture, you are going to take the mark of the beast. You're going to stick that hand out or you're going to stick that forehead out and say, put her here, my child's hungry. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, if you think it's sorrow going on now, you hadn't seen no sorrow till you get into the tribulation period. If you th- hey, look, it is horrible. Let me say, it is horrible what is taking place to the Jewish people. And I'll be the first one to stand with, with Israel, and, and it breaks my heart what's going on uh, with, with the Jewish people. But friend, that won't scratch a surface of death and sorrow that's coming in the Great Tribulation. Now, who's it coming from? Jesus is going to return with a rod of iron. That's going to happen. And there are a lot of people who have made wrong choices. They should have done already got right with God. They should have done already uh, got, gotten saved and gotten right with God. And yes, Christ is broken over their decision to reject Him. And there's going to be many that die and go to hell. Jesus said, hell hath enlarged herself. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. And Christ is broken over those people. But their choices. He said, I would have, Brother Burl. Just as Christ would have set his kingdom up and changed these people's life. He's been willing time after time to save some people. But you would not. You would not. Most people would rather keep their pride and go to a place called hell for eternity. I don't understand that. There's some people that will not turn their ways. There's no way they are not going to give in to God in repentance and faith. They would rather go to hell. That's sobering. I don't understand that. Christ is broken on me. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I would have. May I ask this question? God help us if there's somebody here that's going to end up in the great white throne. And the Lord himself look at you and say, I would have. I would have saved you. I would have changed your life. I I, I would have saved you. You could have been a Christian. You could have been in church. You didn't have to die and go to hell. I would have. But you would not. There's going to be a multitude of people that are going to hear the words I would have. And it blows my mind. It breaks my heart. I'm like, the Lord, the Lord is broken here. I mean, if you were to see this and you could see his life, he is broken and weeping uncontrollably. The Son of God is. Over the reality of of people who are dying without him. Listen, and it is a willful choice to die this way. I don't know about you, but I I don't understand that. I don't understand how someone can willfully make a choice to go. It just blows my mind. I think I've got to understand it somewhat. Did you know this? No man comes to the Father except the Spirit of God draw him. You know, used to, Brother Burrow, you could stand up and you could preach and Holy Ghost conviction would set in on a man and the reality of the truth 
the Holy Spirit of God would open the blinded eyes and men would call out for help. It's been so long since I've heard that, since I've seen that. And what God is saying here, the Lord is saying is this, there's coming a day. You're going to say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I personally believe that reference is, 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 is tied in together with Matthew 24 when the Lord comes back. And you know what? When he comes back, you know what the Bible says? Every eye shall see him. He's coming back and every eye, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He's coming back. Every knee will bow. Everyone. And I'm telling you, if you ever made a mistake and you think, what in the world was I thinking? Did you know this? I'm not going to hear, have to hear I would have. I'm not going to hear the Lord look at me and tell me you would not. The greatest thing I've ever done in this life or in the life to come was to accept him as Lord and Savior. I did. I was under conviction and I invited him into my life. I humbled myself and became obedient unto him and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. It is the greatest decision I've ever made in my lifetime. And there's coming a day, guess what? I hope it's through the rapture. Now you understand that many of us don't think much about the rapture. Do you realize there's mercy in the rapture? He said in the book of Romans, you shall be saved from future wrath. Here's what you're going to see. The Lord, if we're here, if we're not, if we're not, if we're not gone, hadn't passed on, and if we're still here, the soul of the Son of God is going to touch the earth. Jesus is coming back. Hey, look here, he's not sending Gabriel. He's not sending Michael. Jesus himself is coming back to rapture the church. Amen. Now why? Why is he getting the church out? Because I say this in its context. Because all hell is fixing to break loose through the tribulation period. And guess what? I'm not going through the tribulation. I'm gone. Saved from future wrath. He's going to snatch the church out. Now when he does, look here, when he does, all this stuff's going to be setting in and I'm telling you, you talking about wars and you talking about heartache, you talking about pestilence, you talking about nobody being able to sob it. And everything, listen to me, is being prepped for one man. He's going to step on the scene and he's going to say, I can solve it all. You don't think America's right for this guy? He's going to say, I can solve it all. They're going to take it hook, line, and sinker. They're going to be your loved ones and my loved ones that are here. It's going to happen. With all the electronics, you, you don't think they're going to come up with some great thing for the reason we're missing? Oh yeah, they'll explain it away. It's going to come. I just, maybe it's me, but I just had the feeling that some of us think I'm just sitting up here talking about a fairy tale, and I am sitting up here telling you the Word of God, it is unfolding right in front of your eyes. It is unfolding right in front of our eyes. <laughs> I am so glad that I'm a Christian. 
with everything that can go on and go wrong, man, I got in. The greatest thing I've ever done was get in. I'm on the winning side. I'm saved. And I, I, I'm telling you, I don't know how my life's going to end. I don't know. But I know this much. I don't have to worry about all that. God has saved me. And did you know what? I made the right decision. He looked at the nation of Israel and said, you would not. I did. I did. He's coming. I'm not going through tribulation. I'll never see a day of hell. And do you know why he's snatching the church? Jesus is not going to let the church go through what's going, what's going to go on. He's not going to let you and I see the heartache and the sorrow these people are going to face. He's not going to let that go on. I love him today. These are the beginning of sorrows. If all these things that we've been seeing are taking place now, is referring, listen to me, to a close time of the tribulation, what does that tell you? The rapture is before the tribulation. And guess what? There are going to be a bunch of missing people one day. And I'm one of them. But bless God, you just leave them that chair, wouldn't you, Brother Burrow? You don't care about it. Just, can you imagine just right now? Don't tell me he can't do it. He appeared into that room. He come into that room like he would just come out of nowhere. I'd be sitting here, me and Brother Burrow be going up, the chair be down. We'd just go right on up, Brother Burrow. <laughs> Glory to God. That's going to happen one day. If, if we live, it's going to happen. Can you imagine? And we don't believe it, though. We, we see the hurricanes. We see God turn the oceans up. We see God do all that. I'm telling you, it ain't going to be nothing for Christ to rapture the church. It's not going to be a burden. It's, not, it's going to happen in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Matter of fact, it's going to happen so fast, you ain't going to know you go gone until you get there. You talking about a jet taking off, friend. You talking about warp speed. God said it's going to happen in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. How fast it take you to blink your eye? Do you realize the multitude of people that are lost? One day they're going to blink their eye and people are going to be gone out of their lives. I'm glad I'm a Christian father. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of salvation. Thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection. And Lord, thank you for the mark of Christ. We've been marked. We've been bought. I'm not taking no mark of the beast. I'm a child of God. And I'm gone. You have so fixed it for us, Lord. Thank you. Bless your people. But Father, help us to see thy compassion. There's many out there who've heard and heard and heard. But yet they will not. I pray, God, through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, you'd bring them to the reality of hell, of their life, and the consequences of rejecting and dying without Christ. Save someone this day, Lord. Save someone in my family, in our church's family. There's out, there are many out there that need to be saved. I pray you'd save them. We'll give you the honor and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Don't forget your tithing offering on the way out.